is the Honda OEM clutch cover kit. This is the attenuator. This is the oil dipstick. We're going to be removing this from the Grom and replacing it with a Kitako unit. To start with, we're going to use a 17 millimeter socket under here and simply loosen the drain bolt. Go ahead and drain all of the oil out of the engine. After you've drained all the old oil out, go ahead and torque your drain bolt back on. The target specification is 17 to 18 foot-pounds. Don't overdo it. That's a bolt made of iron into an aluminum block, so you don't want to over-tighten it. The Grom SF rear set here is in the way of the bolts you need to access. Uh, to remove the clutch cover. So go ahead and take a 19 millimeter socket, pop it onto this here bolt and loosen this. Make this a little easier, I'm going to loosen the exhaust bracket assembly here. That is a 10 millimeter. I'm going to loosen this upper bolt as well. use a crescent wrench to hold this rear nut here and we're just going to remove this upper assembly. That'll enable us to, to wiggle off the muffler without removing the entire exhaust. Next we're going to use the 12 millimeter, same one we used for this rear bolt with the crescent wrench. We're going to use a 12 millimeter socket to remove this lower bolt here. That'll allow us to pivot this out of the way. We need to be able to move this assembly out of the way. This exhaust bracket's in the way too, so we're going to just pull this spring off here like that and then wiggle wiggle the exhaust connector piece all right now that that'll allow us clearance so we can get in there to undo that bottom bolt and this middle bolt because this assembly is kind of in the way there using the eight millimeter we're going to remove these clutch cover bolts. Okay, when you're removing these bolts from here, this one down here behind this spring is the hardest one to remove. Just get your finger up inside in here. You can kind of stick it to the tool, hold it, and pull it out. Um, the bottom one here, you're going to have to rock this bracket to, to get access to this. So just use the pivot here there's a specific set point where you rotate this, where you have enough clearance, where the upper spring assembly and the lower uh, pivot point here clear the clutch cover so that you can wiggle this out of here. Um, there's a bracket up top right here that is designed to hold the spark plug wire and the oxygen sensor cable also seats into there. so. Go ahead and remove that. You're going to need to cut off this tab part. There's also a small bracket that's holding the sensor for the the sensor wire for the oxygen sensor right here. You're going to be putting that out of the way as well. There's um, the clutch attenuator up top is held in by a bracket. You're going to want to loosen this bracket and that will enable you to um, take the control cable out of the um, clutch attenuator like that. So that frees this piece. Then to get this part off, you just, you're just going to pull on it. It's going to slide right off. And just like that, you've got your oil filter housing. The gasket came right off with it to make sure you put your oil drip pan. This is the factory 
oil screen. Use needle nose pliers to remove that. Spinner assembly here flings oil in the case and it gets pushed through the screen filter. So go ahead and remove that screen filter and clean it and put it back. Make sure to transfer these dowel pins from your old case. You want one over here and one down here. Okay, using needle nose pliers, you're gonna take out the oil screen like this and examine it. And we can see here there's a little bit of funk on there. So we're gonna wipe it off with an oily paper towel. Then we're gonna degrease this, run it under some hot water. You can see the filth coming off there. There's some gunk on the underside here. We just wipe all this off. This is mostly clean, uh, the mostly clean motor oil on this rag. I change the oil quite regularly on the Grom. Um, prior to installing this filtering setup, one of the best things you can do to preserve the engine life and clutch life is to regularly change the oil. Uh, it's a simple oil change. You just take the bolt out, drain it, put the bolt back and add oil. Um, with this new kit, there's gonna be an oil filter and we'll see that later. Okay, next, we need to extract this shift mechanism, the spring-loaded shift mechanism here. So we're gonna start by removing this plunger and you can see it's a metallic peg. Then you're just gonna twist, twist, pull, and rotate this, and eventually it pops out as well. It's a nice strong metallic peg piece, and there's a little indentation on that side where that pin goes. All right. Now we're going to remove these bolts here. If you try to do this without attaching it, it will spin the engine. So we're going to use a special puller tool like this, and we're going to attach this. Okay, so I had to adjust the tool to move it from this hole to this hole to get it to fit this piece. You're gonna get it on there until it's approximately snug. You have to tighten down this this wing nut here, once you figure out the correct size, go ahead and tighten this wing nut down. And then you're going to install that on here like this. And the idea here is that we wanna be able to tighten this to hold this assembly while we're undoing the bolts. Once it's finger tight, you can use this rod here to tighten it more. And the idea is you want a nice firm grip on, on this so that you can control the torque while you're undoing these. So. All right, so once you break these free, you can just Use your socket tool to remove them. You can see when you release the pressure off this gasket, the oil from the spinner is gonna drain out. Uh, conveniently, it ran down the side of the tool into my oil pan. So make sure you keep your oil pan under here while you're doing this. So this just pulls off like that. It's gonna be covered in motor oil, so make sure you catch any drips there. Here's a gasket stuck to the face of the oil spinner. You can just pop that off, leave that like that, and then sticking a piece of paper towel in here, you're gonna to wanna to clean that up. It's full of spent motor oil. Just mop that out of there. Okay, there's a special tool that um, you can use like this. Plug it into a half inch socket wrench and then these tines interface with this special nut inside of here. 
get that lined up on there. And then you're gonna try to break this free. So I ended up putting a microfiber cloth in here. This tool is very hard to work, but once you, you get this, a rag binding the gear, and then the torque on there, it does come off with about 50 foot pounds. The problem with this tool is that where this inserts in here, it wants to go all the way in the tool. If it does like that, then this rod on the end won't allow your torque wrench extension bar to work. So you have to snug this forward by sliding this piece up a little bit like that so that there's enough clearance. And then when you get them onto the nut, you can eventually get it undone. Having this tool and a rag in there so you have two things to grab and the rag binding the gear, that's your best bet. Otherwise, it's really hard to undo. Your specialized tool. And once that's finger tight, just spin this off like that. And then you're gonna pull this assembly free. Now this is a two and a half pound machined aluminum flywheel with splines inside that go on these splines here. You're gonna go ahead and retain. There's a washer like that. And that goes inside here. Go ahead and save that. You can put your oil spinner cover back on here. You can save this if you ever wanted to revert it to OEM condition and you just put the oil thinner back on there and take the three bolts that came with it and thread them back in there. That way you can keep everything together. Um, you're going to want to replace that gasket though if you actually plan on reinstalling this to make sure you've got a good oil seal. Um, if you were to reuse the gasket, you, you risk causing an oil leak. So just thread those in there. And you're not, you're not having to tighten them all the way down. The idea is just to keep all the parts together. And then you can release your, your tool. And you're left with this beautiful 2.5 pound piece of machined metal. After you're done cleaning and drying your screen, go ahead and reinsert the screen back into its holder. Appears to be shaped as to go in one way better than the other. That just provides an additional layer of protection. Double check your gear in here too. Make sure that you didn't leave any fibers or gunk from your rag. I prefer using a microfiber rag. It's a little stronger and tolerates that. You wanna go around the edge too. Take the clean part off a of rag. Just go around the edge, clean up the gasket seating area and just make sure there's no gunk or oil or funk sitting on that edge so that when you put the gasket on there you get a nice clean seat. Go ahead and slip your gasket back onto here. You can use these dowel pegs in the corners here to hold it in place. Make sure that it's all lined up nicely. All right, you're gonna take these two new parts and you're gonna slide the capture nut. It's got splines on it, nut side facing out onto that spline shaft. Once that seats, you're going to take the O-ring that's supplied with the kit and you're gonna insert it inside the groove in there with a little bit of oil. When you install this nut with the gasket in there, make sure that that gasket is firmly seated by using a small finger and just make sure it's seated in the groove. And when you're putting it on here, just wiggle gently like this to seat that O-ring. Make sure it doesn't move. You want a nice tight oil seal in there. Now some, a part that might help is you can take a little bit of oil from your engine case and lube this rod like this, and that will make sliding the O-ring on there a little bit easier because you, you want that O-ring uh, lightly lubricated. We're gonna take a little droplet of engine oil, use my gloved finger, we're gonna smear a little oil in there, and then the goal is to twist, twist it on gently back and forth like this 
you don't want the o-ring popping out so just keep at it you you want to go slow and gentle just push that on there twist back it up a little bit rotate twist make sure that o-ring stays in place when you get it finally down to where the threads start just keep twisting the twisting action helps to keep the, the o-ring spinning and you're going to snug this down finger tight. All right, now you need to tighten this to 47 foot-pounds. There's a metallic washer included in the kit. And it has stamped side out. Make sure that faces out. And this helps to produce the correct offset for the bearing in the clutch cover. So, again, be very gentle while you're removing this. You don't want to damage the O-ring. Slide that washer on there. And then very carefully reinstall your capture nut with the O-ring. Like that. You'll feel it slide on there. And then finger tight again. We're going to configure our torque wrench to 47 foot-pounds, so you go. This nut appears to be 21 millimeter, so we're going to put a 21 millimeter socket on there. And then we're going to set the torque wrench to tighten. And you're going to want to tighten that down. Now if you try to do this without binding the engine up, it's just going to rotate the crank. Um, so you, you need to use a popsicle stick or a rag or a clutch basket holder or something in order to tighten that down. I'm going to use a crescent wrench to hold the collar spline nut while I lean on that to produce the requisite amount of torque. This is certainly not easy. And there it is, 47 foot-pounds. Okay, this is the fancy new Kotaku oil cooling assembly. And what we're going to do here is we're going to reinstall the clutch uh, attenuator. And the way you do that is you insert the clutch attenuator into here and line it up so that the spring catch goes on the outside like that. That's going to give the clutch attenuator Spring, springy feedback. When it finally seats, it's going to pop into place and you're going to rotate inside this here until you can see the depression and then you're going to reinsert this dowel pin in here and you push down with your thumb until it clicks into place. And you'll see the spring catch is there. This has been properly attenuated. That way, when it's installed, the clutch cable can pull correctly on the unit. All right, now we're going to carefully line this up. And you wanna make sure all your hoses and everything are out of the way. You're gonna rotate this bracket in a position where you can Get this in there. You don't want to bump or smash anything. Line that up real carefully. Make sure everything's out of the way. And then just kind of line it up like so. And what you're going for is you want to get those dowel pins in that gasket. See my gasket moves, so you're going to want to stop, back this up. You need to make sure this gasket is exactly where it belongs. So take your time. You want to make sure this gasket is sealed, otherwise your engine will leak oil. All right, and then carefully reinsert. The end of this rod has to end up inside that bearing, so this has to be done precisely. So line this up very carefully. The dowel pins uh, are going to seat in these corners here, and that helps to line everything up. So when you're inserting this, make sure you aim to seat those dowel pins correctly. And that'll help to line you up. And you'll feel it kind of just push on 
Um, it has a nice firm sound when it seats. Go around the border, make sure your gasket, you can see a little border around there, make sure that's all correct. And then gently hand start your retainer bolts. These are eight millimeter operations here. Um, you're going to, before you hook that up, you're gonna to wanna to anchor a couple of points. So, so what I suggest is just finger tight. Okay, and then do that in the bottom corner. So you want one on the top and one on the diagonal down there. Nothing, you're not torquing these down, you're just finger tight. Okay. And then once you got two retainers on there, go ahead and stretch this like that and get your clutch cable piece back into the clutch attenuator. You just fold the, fold the wire down and push the piece back. And then it'll pop into place like that. Then grab one of your retainer bolts and put it in there. And there's a little alignment pin there. So you can make sure that bracket's lined up correctly. One of these eight millimeter bolts to hold that bracket. And then you'll go back and torque them. Okay, on this bracket here, you've got to remove this bottom tab. Okay, with that tab part removed, you can go ahead and slide that assembly back in there. Um, I'm gonna file off this part because it's kind of sharp from cutting so it doesn't garf the outside of my case. All right, now that that's filed down, we're gonna take this and put that right back there like that. And this bracket serves to hold uh, the spark plug wire and to retain the um, oxygen sensor wire. Make sure you put it in the right way. So. Same as before, this is a finger tight operation. And just snug that down. And once you get it snug down, you'll see that it can move a little bit. The idea here is you want this oxygen sensor wire to go in there and this spark plug wire to go in there. That helps secure them. Okay, then finger tight. Make sure on the bottom oxygen sensor wire, you also insert that so that it holds it nice and snug. Then just finger tight that down. And then just continue along the edge. You're not tightening these, you're just snugging them down. We're gonna tighten all these bolts down to eight or seven foot pounds, which is about halfway on my beam meter here. And this is important that you don't you do this in a crisscross pattern. So we're gonna do each one of these. This one you're gonna to have to remove your cap. You can see that I cut that off. Careful of that oxygen sensor wire bracket while you're tightening it too. Make sure it stays in place. And then just double check the tension on all of them. Make sure every one of these is down to the correct torque specification, which is seven foot pounds. Just go all the way around the edge and double check, make sure they're all exactly seven foot pounds. Okay, next we're gonna use my clean funnel. This has a cap on both ends. We're gonna add motor oil here.
Okay, so what you're looking for is when this bike is level and upright, you want the oil level to be halfway between the bottom mark and the upper mark, so between those two marks. You can tilt the bike up after you change the oil. This housing changes the oil capacity, and if you attach oil cooler lines to here and an oil cooler, you're going to have to add more oil to account for the added volume. We'll see that in the next video. Okay, we got to readjust the rear bracket here. So you're going to tilt this until this hole lines up on the bottom, then reinsert your 12 millimeter bolt. And tighten that down like that. Then using your large socket, this is the 19 millimeter. We're gonna tighten this upper bolt. Attach this um, midsection of the exhaust. Spin this back into place like so, and then stretch your spring, okay, that holds the exhaust, still adjustable, we're going to take our muffler here, we're going to Hang it on the rear set. I'm gonna first wiggle the pipes together until they're approximately lined up like that, and until this bolt hole lines up so you can insert it. Make sure to use the included washer. You feed that through there, spin the nut on the back side, and then that's also a 12 millimeter. Once you get it down snug tight with your fingers, you want to use a crescent wrench on the back side to hold the nut so you can tighten it on the front. You don't want this rattling around freely. Once you tighten that down, do it to about 15 foot pounds or so. Flat nice and snug. Then you're going to switch back to a 10 millimeter and you're going to tighten this retainer back onto the exhaust. And what that does is it squeezes the pieces of metal together so there's a nice snug connection. This is a single cylinder engine so it pulses a lot and it's going to vibrate the exhaust so you want a nice snug connection. Maybe 10 foot pounds on that too, finger tight. Make sure everything feels secure, and that's it.